Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Rama, and in today's video I'll be going over every property and business in Grand Theft Auto 5 Online that earns you money. We're going to be ranking them from S to no, but a little different from a lot of YouTubers, we are going to be having a solo and a multiplayer tab. A lot of times people just rank the business on how much money it makes. But selling businesses, let's say like your motorcycle club solo, takes a heck of a lot longer than it does with multiplayer. And as well, you can sell in populated lobbies with the high demand bonus. So we're going to be having two separate categories that I'm going to be putting these lists of properties in. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. But either way, let's get straight into it and start off with the nightclub. Now, the nightclub is, in my opinion, an absolutely amazing property. In fact, easily, this is going into the S tier, not only for solo, but as well for multiplayer. Now, the reason behind that is you don't need people to help you with the nightclub. The nightclub, you get one single vehicle when you do a cell mission, and as well, it has a passive income. Now, it kind of has two separate incomes that are both kind of passive in their own way. You have one where you keep your nightclub popularity up, and you earn $50,000 every in-game day, which is a lot of money. Every 48 minutes, you're bringing home 50 grand. But as well, if you have the nightclub fully properly set up with all the technicians assigned to the correct roles and you've got all of your other businesses running in the background, you're making another $60,000 every 48 minutes. That's $110,000 every 48 minutes in GTA Online for doing practically nothing. To keep your popularity up, it's pretty dang simple. You walk into the club every now and then when you collect your money, kick somebody out or deliver a VIP and boom, your popularity is way back up to the top. It is incredibly easy to maintain the nightclub and the amount of money it makes back in return is insane. And one of the biggest advices I can give you if you're not currently doing it is when it comes to online lobbies, you should be selling your nightclub in my opinion, in public lobbies, because it's one vehicle, and the cell missions are usually incredibly easy. I haven't had a single vehicle blown up, and I've done all of my sales solo at the nightclub. You can make an extra 50% income off of your single vehicle sales, which is insane. So the nightclub easily fits into S tier because of how easily it is run and how efficient it can be on making money. So, with the nightclub out of the way, next up we go to the casino, which is gonna go into C. I don't really think it matters if I put it in multi, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, but you have to have two people anyway, so, yeah, let me fix this. Casino for solo is a no. If you're a player that doesn't have literally anybody to help you with the casino missions, you're never gonna be able to do them. So solo, the casino is the worst business ever, it won't make you money. However, if you do have one other friend to help you with the casino, casino, it's not bad, because basically if you buy the penthouse, I think you get upwards of like $800,000 just from completing the missions, and the penthouse cost about $1.5 you also get an armored variant of the Paragon R. I think the car is pretty cool, in fact I own the car on my Broke to Billions account, but just because you get a car and a little bit of the money back doesn't make the penthouse worth it, in my personal opinion, especially because it doesn't even unlock the Diamond Casino heist. Kinda weird, I don't understand why that doesn't unlock the heist, I feel like that's how it should have been, but oh well, casino, really a business you shouldn't be buying in general, but you can at least earn some money back and you get a pretty cool car, so that's why we're putting it in in C tier. Now the weed business we're also going to be putting into, I'm going to do C tier. I don't think it's a bad business, but I also don't think it's necessarily a good business. We're going to do weed as C solo and for multiplayer, we'll put it into B. Now the reason why is down to the fact that when you are selling multiplayer, when it comes to motorcycle clubs, if you feel comfortable, as I've talked about before, you get that high demand bonus, which is an extra 50%. So if we were to pull up the calculator really quick, the weed sells for like 315,000, which if you're selling normally solo, you're going to get only 315,000 out. But if you have three people help you sell in an online session and you can easily do it in like 10 minutes, you're not only going to do the missions way quicker, but you're going to get an extra 50% net gain on that, meaning that instead of 315,000, you're now going to make 472,000 off of that business. That is why selling in online lobbies, especially if you have friends to help you do it, makes businesses, especially the motorcycle club, oops, don't want to do that, way, way better. 
partner. So C for solo, definitely not a great business, not bad. I mean, it's still 300 grand that you'll get, but definitely not as good as when you're doing it multiplayer. Now the auto shop is a weird business. There's a couple ways to make money with it. You can sell vehicles that are delivered to your auto shop or not sell, but should I say fix them, do some customization, kind of repo work and then give it back and make a 30 grand profit. It takes like maybe five minutes to do that, but honestly, a payphone hit takes half the time and it makes triple the money. So I don't really think that part of the auto shop is good. We're more talking about the contracts that can make you 180,000 to $300,000. Now, depending on what contract you do, it's gonna be a lot easier or harder. But even then, it's still not a great business. I would say on average, it takes 25 to 30 minutes to do a single contract. And at that point, you could have just worked on like the Dr. Dre missions and made a million dollars, which only takes like an hour if you're doing it. So yeah, I personally don't see the auto shop as a great business. I'm gonna put it into C. Uh, same for multiplayer, it doesn't really matter if you're playing multiplayer or solo as the auto shop doesn't change. So yeah, it's not a good property, but it does let you get discounts on every upgrade when you purchase a vehicle. Also, as I talked about previously, if you're under level 100, you get the opportunity of getting all engine turbo upgrades. So I don't think the auto shop is bad by any means. It's just not a good business for earning money necessarily. Now, the bunker is the best out of all all of the passive apart from the uh, nightclub because the nightclub has two incomes making it insane so the bunker is going to go into a tier it's a really good business but there is a couple problems I have with the bunker actually you know what solo I'm gonna put the bunker into B tier and the reason behind that is because I hate the sail missions. If you get the off-road buggy sail mission when it comes to the bunker, you're basically screwed, especially if you're doing it solo, even if you only fill your bunker halfway. If you just get two of those darn buggies, you're not gonna be able to deliver both. It's almost impossible. In fact, my friend was selling multiplayer and he filled it about halfway and we got four buggies. We still could barely sell it. So when doing bunker missions solo, if you fill it any more over than half, you're gonna be in some really tough water, which is why I'm putting it into B tier. However, if you're doing the bunker multiplayer, then it's gonna go easily into A tier. That's the weird thing. When you're having people help you, the bunker, not only are the missions way easier and very fast to complete, but you make a crazy amount of money. If you're doing this again in an online lobby, and let's say your bunker fills up to $900,000 worth of profit, if you get an extra, again, 50% off of that, you're gonna be making 1.3 million dollars in profit so multiplayer I see the bunker as a great business if you have players to help you out if you have friends to help you it's an amazing business but solo the sail missions are extremely painful if you get the Meriwether insurgent mission where you have to deliver upwards of three insurgents to each location and then you have to clear Meriwether at each of those locations and then drive all three to the next you all know what I'm talking about if you've had it. It's incredibly painful. I hate the sail missions on the bunker because some of them are incredibly easy and then some of them are just plain awful. Because of that, bunker goes in the B for solo, but definitely A tier if you have just one or two people to help you out. Now the cocaine, I'm actually gonna put as well for, hmm, I'm gonna do B tier right next to the bunker. I think that honestly, I'd rather do solo sail missions with the cocaine business over the bunker, but because the bunker makes a little bit more money per hour, I still think it's a bit better of a business, so they kind of even out in my opinion. But the only sail mission that sucks when it comes to motorcycle club, like really sucks that you can't do solo, is the UPS vans or just the post op vans. Because I've tested all the sail missions. You can do the plane solo, you can do the helicopter solo, you can do the garbage truck solo. They're actually not that bad. Obviously, if you get the single truck, that's the easiest one by far. And the boats, you can also do very easily solo. Same for the motorcycles. It's just the post-op vans that you can't do solo. And all you need to do if you get the post-op vans is go into a new lobby, boom, start selling again, and you'll get a different mission. So I see the cocaine right up there next to Bunker, but because it's actually got easier sell missions, in my opinion, I think that the cocaine is actually just right next to it. Now, when it comes again, to selling with friends, it goes right up there into A tier. Cocaine fills up to, I think, $525,000 at max, which is not nearly as high as the bunker does fill, 
but if you add on again that 1.5 bonus at 787,000 in total for high demand. So the bunker and the cocaine are both really good in their own ways, and I think you can be making a lot of money if you have friends help you selling. That's one thing you really need to do. I'm waiting for my friends to help me sell my businesses tomorrow, and that way I can make that extra bit of cash. Now the counterfeit cash factory is a pretty decent one at that. I think it makes like $48,000 per 48 minutes if I'm not mistaken, which is a little bit less than the cocaine and a little bit less than the methamphetamine, but it's still a pretty solid business overall. And because of that, I'm gonna be putting it into B tier, right up there with the weed. I think that it's not a bad business by any means, but it's pretty similar to the weed. If you got friends to help you sell, you'll make a decent profit, but nothing crazy. And again, same thing. Actually, I'm gonna put the cash. Yeah, we'll do C tier for solo. I don't really think any of the biker clubs apart from the coke are good solo because you're just not making that much money off of it. Like the cocaine fills all the way up to 500,000 and the counterfeit cash only goes to like 360,000. It's still quite a bit less. And because of that, you're putting in a lot of money, 75,000 each resupply. I just don't see it as a great business solo. A lot of the motorcycle clubs are not a great amount of time spent in the game, should I say? I'm trying to word this correctly, but really, if you're doing these businesses solo, they're just not a good way of spending your time. So now that we've done that, document forgery just goes into a flat no. Even if you're doing this with multiplayer, it's still a no. It's a bad business. The only reason I own the document forgery is to literally be a buffer. It is simply to hopefully get raided instead of my other businesses if I do ever get the event of a raid. Now let me bring these up here so we can start off with the next ones. When it comes to the cargo plane business, I would say solo, it's a flat no. Not even C tier, it's the worst business right up there next to document forgery. Because why do plane cargo when you're getting like 10, 15,000 per crate profit when you could just do, you know, special cargo and make upwards of 20,000 and you can source three at once. Where plane, it all depends on how many people you have helping you. If you have four people helping you, then you're making 40,000 to every source. And unlike cargo, special cargo, you're not paying for that source and you get an extra bonus each time if you manage to fill one specific product. So I don't think the plane business is bad if you're playing with more than one person. In fact, if you're playing with four people, I would actually put it up there in a B tier. I don't think it's bad, especially because you need it to get planes, you know, if you want to get your hands on any of the special planes in the game or, you know, a helicopter like the Annihilator Stealth or any of those cool things you need to own a hanger. But when it comes to earning money alone, I don't think it's bad actually if you have a lot of people helping you, but it's absolutely terrible if you don't. Now the KO Perico, I mean, obviously that goes right into S tier. I don't really need to say anything else. It's definitely just as good as the nightclub. The reason I actually personally like the nightclub more is because you don't really need to do anything. You, you literally just sit there and every now and then you kick somebody out of the club and boom, you're making money. The KO heist, you actually got to spend a lot of time setting up. Then you got to do the heist and then you got to wait three hours. It's not that painful, it's pretty easy to do, but nightclub's still easier in my opinion. Methamphetamine, it's the same as I would say, it's just B tier, again. I don't think that any of these businesses are amazing when you're doing solo, so the meth, I would say it's just straight up there with coke, it's a little bit worse, so. Eh, if I could, I'd put it like in between, but that would look weird. So we'll leave it in B tier for now. I, I just don't see it being anything better. Oh, I, I can't get this even, it's gonna annoy me, but I'm gonna put it in B tier. And then when it comes to selling with multiplayer, yeah, again, I'm gonna put it, oh, I accidentally got rid of this. I'm gonna put it back in the A. I mean, the meth goes up to like 400 something thousand, and if you're getting an extra 200,000 off of that, I think it, I remember it sells for like 689,000 in a full lobby, which is not bad. Again, if you have people help, helping you, these businesses are not bad, specifically the motorcycle club, but it's only if you have people helping you. If you don't, then all these passive businesses are actually more time spent on the sell missions. I mean, for example, the Coke. On average, if you're selling solo, it takes, I think I did the calculations, about 25 to 28 minutes to sell everything. So if you've got three, you know, helicopters, you got three planes, takes about 28 minutes. If you've got four motorcycles, takes about 20 minutes. If you've got the, uh, the garbage trucks, it takes about 25 minutes. 
it just takes so much time to sell. And not to mention when you're doing it solo because you're not getting that high demand bonus, you're also eating into profits when you're buying your resupplies. So in reality, sure, you're making 79,000 an hour, as every YouTuber will say for your bunker, but you're buying the products. So actually you're making more like 50,000 an hour. Personally, I see all of these businesses as really bad solo and only really good when you're doing them with multiplayer and people helping you out. Now the agency is a true passive business. There's a bit of a difference between passive and semi-passive. For example, the nightclub is a perfect example of both. It has a semi-passive and a passive business. Semi-passive is when you have to either buy the supplies for like the motorcycle club and then sell it and that's it. You don't have to wait for or you don't have to make the product itself. For special cargo, if you're sourcing and selling, that is a business that you are grinding. That is an active business. If you are not doing anything for that business, you will not be making money. When it comes to the motorcycle clubs, all you need to do is click a button, boom, products are sent there. You don't need to do anything. You just need to sell it and resupply it. So because of that, it's a semi-passive business is what I like to call it. Nightclub is great because it's honestly both almost passive. All you gotta do is sell for the nightclub and the sell missions are so easy. And the other one you collect, the agency, is a weird business because not only do you get the Dr. Dre, not only can you make money with payphone hits, which is insane alone at 85,000 every 20 minutes, which is actually better than vehicle cargo, but as well, you also get a passive income once you've done 200 plus missions of 20,000 every 48 minutes. And it's not like the nightclub where you have to keep resupplying it. It is a flat income that will never go down. And because of that, the agency solo is not only an S, but uh, well, multiplayer doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, I'm not gonna put it for multiplayer because the agency isn't a multiplayer thing. Uh, I mean, if, if your friends are helping you, they don't get paid for the Dr. Dre, they don't get paid for the the, uh, the anything. Yeah, honestly, I'm just gonna put it like, if, if you're doing multiplayer stuff, the agency's just a no. But, uh, yeah, I mean, apart from that, it, it, I'm not even gonna put it. There's just no point to put it in multiplayer. The agency is a solo business. The Dr. Dre missions, you can do solo. Everything with the agency, you can do solo. But, it is an amazing business to be making money with. So, easily an S T. Now, the OG heists, these are the Pacific Standard, we've got the Series A funding, we have the Humane Labs raid, and we also have Prison Break and the Fleeka job. There's a lot of them, and it's a bit of a weird opinion I have on them. Rockstar just buffed them. And here's what I'll say, if you're a newer player and you're pretty decent at the game and you haven't done the OG heists, there's one reason why I would somewhat put them in like A and B, and that is the Criminal Mastermind Challenge. For any of you that are unaware of the challenge, basically, if you do all the heists on hard and nobody dies and you complete every heist, you get a $10 million bonus. 10 million! Not to mention, you also can get an all-in-order bonus, which is like another two and a half million, and and if you get a same crew bonus, it's like another 1 million. So if you add all those together and your first time bonuses, which an extra 100k there, plus the fact that Rockstar buffed all the payouts, I actually think if you do your first run all the way through and you manage to get all the rewards, you're going to be bringing home about 15, 16 million for maybe seven, eight hours of work. I think that the OG heist, well, first of all, solo, it's awful. I mean, why would you ever, I'm not going to put it in because it's not a solo thing, but I personally believe that if you do them as a first time thing, then it's easily A tier, okay? That's what I will say. But at the same time, once you've done them, so let me, let me add this really quick. Let me just get out text and type in oh that's very big let me just do first time and then uh, let me make this very very small there you go and then just put that as white text boom okay so I believe that the first time you do the OG heists it's worth it but after that I think that this should be going down to a no because there's no reason to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, there's there's no reason to do the OG heist after you've done them the first time because you, there's other methods that are way more efficient. So down into no it goes. Arcade is, I'm going to put that as an A tier, honestly. The arcade is a passive business, but a useless one at that. I don't have any of the arcade machines because it's kind of useless to buy them, in my opinion. It costs a lot of money, like up to a couple million to buy the arcade machines, and you get 5,000 back. I mean, 
spending literally 20 hours and you're only making 100,000 back. It, it's useless in my opinion. I wouldn't suggest to buy the arcade for the passive income, but the reason why it gets A is down to the fact of resupplying other businesses, and you can also do the the uh, casino heist from it. Now, the casino heist is great, especially after Rockstar made it so that the KO heist has such a long cooldown solo. It's, uh, it's pretty dang good because now you can do the casino heist and the KO heist with friends, and it's great. Now, because of that, the arcade goes into A, for solo, but if you're having friends to help you because you need friends to help you do the heist, it goes in the S tier. So you need two people to do the casino heist, so that's why it's in S tier, but the reason it still goes into A for solo is because it helps you resupply all of your businesses. So your bunker, your cocaine, your meth, your counterfeit cash, your weed, if you're running all those businesses, you can resupply all of them from the arcade as well, your nightclub, everything, apart from the new businesses being the KO and the agency, but apart from that, everything can be run from your arcade, making it a great way to spend less time dealing with all of your businesses instead of driving to each bunker and motorcycle club you have, boom, go right to your terminal command center, buy it, and you're done. So the arcade is a great business for solo players and multiplayer, I do it all the time, I use it, great business. When it comes to cargo, this is actually a tricky one because in the latest update, the Criminal Enterprise DLC, cargo got buffed because not only is it a pretty decent way of making money if you're just sourcing cargo, but as well, if you're paying your associates, which the new one is Lupe, you're going to get a pretty decent income of around 140000 an hour. Now, that's not including the sell time, so on average it takes about 20 minutes for a full cargo warehouse sale, so maybe about 110000 an hour, but the reason I'm actually going to put easily crates into A tier, and the reason why is because of the, the passive basic, it's semi-passive is what I'll call it, but it's because selling cargo is incredibly easy. Unlike the motorcycle club, unlike the bunker, every cargo you get is easy sale. You have 30 minutes and you will always be able to sell it. The Titan is incredibly easy. You just have to do 10 drop-offs, boom, done. And at the same time, if you get the trucks, the Brickade's not only really fast, but it's usually only three deliveries. Boom, done. And the worst one you can get is the 15 delivery one. Not only did I do the 15 delivery one with a two and a half million dollar payout, but I did it solo in a multiplayer 30 player lobby. So it is very easy to do the new method of making a semi-passive income with special cargo. Because of that, easily fits into A tier for solo. And honestly, for multi, I, I'm putting it into S tier. And that's because, again, if you just have teammates help you or your, your friends help you that are associates, whatever, and you sell, you can make an extra 1.1 million on each large warehouse. That's insane. I sold, I don't know if you guys watched my previous videos, but I have a video uh, where I sold my special cargo. And the normal payout is like $2.2 .2 million. But because of the one or the 0.5 bonus you're getting, basically you sell it for 3.3. So if you have this passive going off in the background, you can get an extra off of each business if it's, you know, an extra 1 million, you're going to get an extra 5 million from all of your cargo. Oh, that's, that's not correct. Imagine you made that much money, but uh, you're going to get an extra 5 million just selling it with friends. And it's a great business because of that. You know, if you add an extra 50% income on the, the semi-passive way of making money, you're making almost 200,000 an hour. So because of that, I do actually think that the new method for crates makes it easy S tier. You put in almost zero effort. You just have to pay the person every 48 minutes for them to go source the crates and boom, you're making huge money back. Let me know what you guys think about that one in the comments. There's going to be people out there that are like, why'd you put crates there without watching the video? But if you watch the video, you understand why. Next up, we have cargo. Get it? Because it's it's vehicle cargo. So I, I did. <laughs> I'm so funny, aren't I? So vehicle cargo, I have to put it into... Here's the problem I have with vehicle cargo is right now, it's just the agency has the same thing. The agency has a 20 minute cooldown and you can get $85,000. I'm going to put vehicle cargo into B. 
tier. I mean, it's not bad. If you're doing vehicle cargo and the agency payphone hits together, it's not a bad business at all. But there's just better ways of making money nowadays. So that's how I'd put it. It'll go into B. I don't think it's a bad business at all. Solo, it's a great business. When it comes to multiplayer, again, it's... It, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Oh, wait, I accidentally got rid of it. There you go. Yeah, when it comes to multiplayer, it doesn't really matter. I mean, vehicle cargo, because of it not really having a risk, it's nice when you sell solo because of the fact that you don't really lose much if it gets blown up apart from like 20 grand. Sure, you're going to lose 20 grand, but, you know, it's better than losing $2 million worth of vehicle or special cargo, you know? So I don't think vehicle cargo is necessarily bad. It's just not really worth it, in my opinion, now that the agency exists. And finally, we have the Doomsday Heist, and the Doomsday was buffed in the latest update of the game. Pretty big buff as well. It's like a $1.7 million payout now for the final heist, which isn't bad at all, but it's still not a great payout, especially down to the fact that the setups and the preps are an absolute pain. It takes one hour in total to do the full preps and finish the K.O. Perico heist if you get it down to a rhythm. It takes the Doomsday, not only do you need two people, but I would say maybe an hour at minimum to two or even three hours from the preps to then the missions and then doing the heist. It's just, it's not worth it. it. It is not worth the time you put in. It's not bad because the first time you do it, you can get bonuses like all in order. You can get the same crew bonuses and criminal mastermind too. So I'll do the same thing as I did for the other one. Also, you get Lester calls for free. So we'll do a first time. Oh, actually, you know what? I can just, uh, I can just drag this over here. Let's just do uh, doomsday for solo. You can't do it solo. So it's the worst buy ever solo. So I'm, I'm just not going to put it. Well, you know, we can put it there solo there. There you go. Uh, but if you are having friends help you out, I would put the Doomsday in the first time you do it. Hmm, I would say B. Uh, B tier. It's not bad at all. It's not like the Criminal Mastermind payout. It's only 1.7 million for the Doomsday, but it's not terrible. And I would say after the first time, the Doomsday heist is an easy C tier. There's no real reason to do it. Uh, you know, so, uh, same for OG Heist, I probably, oh no, I did put OG Heist in there, I already put it as a no. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, this is my tier list for Grand Theft Auto 5. I know, uh, there's a lot of talking done, there was a lot of explaining on why I've put certain things in certain places, and I know there are going to be disagreements in the comments down below, but either way, this was my thought process onto how everything works. If I'm playing with friends, when it comes to multiplayer, this is how I would rank the businesses, you know? If I was doing the casino heist, obviously it's great. If I had friends helping me with the KO, it's great. The nightclub doesn't really matter, so it just goes there because it, it can. And when it comes to crates, it's great because you get that extra high demand bonus if you have people helping you. The bunker, cocaine, meth, OG heist, all those. You need people to help you, but they can be insane. Weed, cash, all these, it, it really has to do with how many people you have helping you. When it comes to solo, these are the top three I would suggest to look into buying. Obviously, the Kosatka is the first one you should look into. Then, the agency. And once you get all of your other businesses set up, then the nightclub's a pretty good business. But you do need to make sure that you have your other businesses set up, or the nightclub's going to be quite useless, in my opinion. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, you know what to do. But other than that, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.